this question talks about increasing intracranial pressure. And if we have that head injury with uh, rising intracranial pressure, I would expect to see which one of these. Now, I got to tell you, this has been for all my students in my EMT and AEMT classes. This is um, a concept of vital signs trends that's very challenging. All right, here we go. I'm going to close this poll and put the answers up. And in this case, a majority of people chose an incorrect answer, only by a little. But 47% of the people said the blood pressure of 92 over 78. Where we have trouble in this is these trends and vital signs. In shock, the blood pressure drops and the pulse goes up. With increasing intracranial pressure, with when we start to herniate the brain, the pulse goes down and the blood pressure goes up. See, the body doesn't communicate particularly well. When we have all that pressure in the brain, the body says, we're gonna increase the blood pressure. Why? So we can get blood up to feed the brain, to kind of fight that pressure in the head. But the baroreceptors in the body say, hey, the blood pressure is crazy high. And what do the baroreceptors do? They tell the heart to slow down. They go up to the brain, they say, okay, slow the heart down. The blood pressure's gone out of control. We don't know why. So we go and we lower the pulse and we're rising the blood pressure at the same time. So elevated blood pressure, decreased pulse is what we see in herniation from uh, increased intracranial pressure. Shock gives us a low blood pressure, but the increased pulse. The answer to the last question was the pulse of 38. Um, the, the decreased pulse uh, would be accompanied generally by a rising blood pressure. This is vitally important. Not only that you that you know the answer to this, but you understand this. And this is why I said about the pathophysiology, right? Uh, important concept like this at this part of the class. If you got that question wrong, you're going to be okay. But this is something that at this point I would want you to know if you're in my class, and I want you to go back and look at that. Okay. All right. Let's do an OB question. And here we go. All right, 53% of you picked the correct answer, placenta previa. Painless, bright red bleeding generally indicates placenta previa. Placenta previa is when the placenta implants uh, over um, the exit from the uterus, over the cervix. And as the baby gets larger in the third trimester, uh, puts pressure on that. Now, patients who have uh, prenatal care may know about this and what happened, but if you don't know this, placental abruption, the next chosen one, is painful. It happens in the third trimester, often as a result of trauma to the mom or sometimes during delivery, and it's painful. Placental abruption is not only painful, uh, but it has very high mortality. And even think about this, the onset of labor, right? Um, I would think most people would say that if that have had a baby or been around for a baby or watched deliveries on television, that the onset of labor involves some contraction and some discomfort. So that's not the answer. Placenta previa was the answer. 